Good morning, folks. Switcher here. What does Switcher have in store for you? An update on my World War I diorama. And this is where we're at uh, to date. And uh, this morning I created the craters and all that. As you can see now, the entire uh, trench system itself, okay, with the exception of adding sandbags here. And I got to cut this piece out so we can add sandbags. Okay, and I have to install the machine gunner's platform over here, but the woodwork is basically done. Uh, a lot of fiddly work that goes into that because you got to wait to dry, and the uh, switcher has not been snoozing here. You'll see in a minute that uh, as things were drying, and uh, of course, uh, life uh, does, uh, you know, we have a life outside of modeling. Uh, this has been an interesting project. I mean, I went all out with my mojo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I still got a good supply left, but I mean, after I'm done, I have no idea, okay, uh, what I am going to have left. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting project. And uh, so uh, let's discuss uh, what we see here, for, uh, for the lack of a better word. Okay. And uh, you'll understand why some of this stuff took so long. So uh, what we see here, okay, is the craters that I've created. And uh, I've shown you folks before uh, on one of the videos how I was going to do that. And there's my uh, crater uh, creating tool, which was basically gel medium that was uh, glued on to a file handle, okay, of appropriate size. And I said, well, we can make smaller craters and so on and so forth uh, with a smaller file handle. I decided let's just do this uh, as it is. And, you know, although I, this may look uh, like it is, I mean, all we do is fill those up and... Uh, <laughs> Bob's your uncle, but uh, it's uh, haphazard, okay, as haphazard as I want it to be, and I was mentioning to Paul, when you do a diorama, uh, try to keep your numbers uneven, I don't know why, uh, that is just the way the way Japanese do things, and uh, when we were talking about uh, certain things in scale, the golden means, blah, 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 okay, anyway, so this one here, the vehicle will be covering that one, so we'll have 13 showing, <laughs> switch of story, I'm sticking with it, it is what it is. So uh, what we have over here, and we see some small craters there, and we're going like, oh, okay, what the hell is that? Well, uh, A, these are mines that are blown up, and perhaps these are mortars, okay, versus uh, big artillery shells and so on and so forth that create uh, the craters. Uh, none of them uh, are uniform, okay? They're all various depths and all that, and maybe we'll show one with water in it. We don't know. But over here in the front here is the minefield. Where that line is, is we're going to have that uh, coiled up bob wire and so on and so forth. Okay, a big, large coil. And, of course, a lot of that is going to get squished by the tank, but it is what it is. And then over here, we'll have uh, our stand-up uh, bob wire. Okay. And uh, then we have, uh, over here is the parapet. And, of course, sandbags are going, uh, going to be going over here, and they're hidden by grass. That's known as the parapet. Uh, the, 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 the jury's out, okay? I've seen pictures where we see the sandbags, and I've seen pictures where we don't see the sandbags. And the sandbags were there to protect the individual, but at the same time, not to give up their positions, okay? Uh, the biplanes used to fly uh, above and all that and uh, picked up uh, the trench systems and all that, as we know. But uh, it, it was basically not to give up your position, okay, through aerial view. So uh, before we go into uh, discussing this, um, let's discuss uh, all the little bits and bobs that I've been doing off and on, okay, while things were happening. And uh, we'll move this slightly over there so we can get this entire thing uh, in focus. I mean, uh, zoom in on it. And uh, we're going to go up this way. Uh, so, what do you got on the board switcher? Well, uh, these are uh, these are spikes that are going to be used to hang the pail and so on and so forth, and to hang the the pioneer tools, perhaps or something. Uh, this was a uh, one thirty five scale uh, uh, bob wire post, as we'll see. We'll have four rows over here. We have the flimsies, okay, oil, water, okay. Uh, fuel was uh, straight black, as we discuss other wares. And, uh, but uh, this particular oil could be oil or it could be a kerosene for, for the lamps and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, the, the lamps would not be used in the trench system and sus because it gives us a glow at night and the enemy can pick that up. But uh, it is definitely in the dugout. And uh, uh, in the dugout, 
uh, there's a blackout curtain and so on and so forth. There's no light escaping them, okay? Uh, it is what it is. So uh, we have a coil of bob wire here that I created. Uh, here's a pail that's going to be uh, hanging up. And uh, we'll just get rid of that. And uh, this coil of bob wire that I created, it took me about... Well, you got to let things dry about. Uh, this uh, represents... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 50 feet or 135 scale. I don't have my, my numbers with me. Uh, it's five and a quarter coils. Uh, this was 18 inches long, okay, that I had to make. Uh, this entire trench system is, uh, is uh, <clears throat> eight feet across. So uh, this is going on the vehicle. Uh, we have a pail that's going to be uh, laying down on the ground. We got the various crates. And uh, we have uh, the tools for the trade, and the uh, these were painted khaki, uh, XF84 for the heads, and uh, the highlighted, okay, uh, because these were left in the trenches, high humidity, uh, you are going to get some of that uh, patina on these tools. But uh, the handles work, it started off originally as khaki, okay, and uh, the, the wear and tear on them uh, created the, the highlights, and we see the various crates here. Okay, um, that uh, have been worn, and they're going in the trench as well. Uh, something else that was created, if I could find a stupid thing now. Okay, uh, here's our uh, our water barrel. Okay, uh, we saw that. Okay, uh, there she is, uh, wetted up and so on. And we're going to dirty this up, but I mean, this is where we started off. Uh, it did not come with a lid. So what I used is uh, the uh, top and bottom, like we see there's the bottom, a very, very tight fit. I had to slight those sandly and uh, slight those sandly, uh, slightly sand those, okay, to get them to fit snugly. Uh, I used a, a piece of tubing that I had to make them uniform. This one here, I sanded a little bit more, okay, and I glued it to a top that I made on the lathe. Okay, and uh, use a grab handle. Instead of making it out of wood, I decided to make it out of uh, aluminum wire and all that good stuff. Um, I think that is uh, 1.5 or 2 millimeter wire or whatever. And just a little grab handle. It fits on top there. Okay, nicely like so. So that was done. Uh, what we see here on the, there is a periscope. Okay, with an eyepiece, and I, it's kind of wonky down here. That's because there's some silly putty to hold that eyepiece into place. Uh, the other thing that I've done is uh, create the slings for all my figures. And uh, we'll see what the camera picks up here. Okay, uh, this uh, was created with uh, fly tying lead. Okay, uh not quite sure uh, the size of this. I've had this. Uh, I've got two different sizes. This is the small size. I couldn't find my roller bigger, but it's the small size that we wanted. And basically all you do is uh, you flatten it out with a hammer, okay, until uh, it's flat. And uh, this was perfect. And, of course, you, you can't do this on your bench. you got to do that on, on a hard surface. And uh, once we paint this uh, XF60, and uh, it's going to look uh, nice because... Uh, canvas is not uh, uniform. It's got a little whatever. Okay. Uh, what we see over here is a bunch of uh, matchsticks that uh, been turned uh, that were uh, rounded off. Okay, with my uh, wood graining tool uh, while I was watching a movie last night. Okay, and uh, they turned out uh, quite nicely. So that is it for the stowage or the stuff that's going to be in the crater, uh, not the crater, but in the trench system. Uh, I also created the machine, uh, the machine uh, gun uh, platform. And as you can see, uh, the weathered wood there, this is uh, the wood that was used, okay, without uh, any uh, weathering done to it. And the weathering was accomplished with a, uh, a gray oil wash, which was basically titanium white and uh, ivory black, okay. In proper proportions until I got the color that I wanted. And uh, the thing that is beside it, I created a little jig. Okay, uh, with a piece of plywood. That was repurposed from the shop. Okay, I cut a couple of slits with the bandsaw and then uh, installed the uh, the joists in there and then just glued the planks on that. And uh, thanks to Steve on the magazine he sent me. And I had seen this and this platform is going to go uh, right there. Okay. 
there's going to be a post over here to support it as you see it's going down there's going to be a port over here and that is also where the water barrel will be sitting uh, later on okay right there <clears throat> now so uh, this is the ladder to uh, get out of the trench system and they all got to be rebuilt because the uh, the distance between uh, the rungs okay is uh, extensive it's it's too much okay so what we're going to do, here's our machine gunner position, and we'll just put that where it goes. Uh, your machine gunner would uh, go, you can either escape or your machine gunner comes up here on this platform, and this is going to be laying down, okay? And uh, it is what it is. I'm watching my time here. And uh, so we got all our props out of the way. And uh, the next phase, okay, uh, to this, and uh, before we get into discussing that, let's have a look at... Uh, the entire uh, system, okay, uh, what you see there, okay, is a fighting position. Uh, the middle section is a resting position. And, of course, we got the other fighting position uh, at the end. And that one there is slightly smaller than this one. You know, it is what it is. And uh, there we have uh, the entire planking system. And I want it to look haphazard, not perfect, because all this was built by hand, okay? Uh, we saw corrugated steel in some of the trenches and all that good stuff, but I prefer the wood look. And uh, it, it looks the part. Okay, I'm absolutely uh, thrilled uh, with this. So uh, that was that. Uh, we are going to cover this entire service. I'm going to focus out now because we don't have to be focused in. I'm going to uh, coat the entire surface, okay, with my gel medium. We're going to flock the grass on there with the exception of uh, the trenches. Okay. Because, like I said, we have to reverse engineer that. The grass was there first. So when the craters are created, it flings the dirt up in the air and so on and so forth. Okay, and it lands on the grass. And that's what we're going to try to duplicate over here. I still have to dig out for my sandbags over here on the parapet. And on the sides, uh, we are going to also show the dirt. But what we are going to show, uh, because I have two colors dirt now, the dirt from my garden, okay, which was... Um, which was rather dark, and I mixed a mix uh, of uh, my dirt, which was which I call it uh, medium now, and we're going to focus in on that. Do, 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 do. Okay, and see what the camera is going to pick up here. Okay, uh, we have a light medium, and of course mine is uh, almost uh, it's dark brown, almost black. Okay, and uh, what we are going to depict on the side here, because uh, topsoil is only on the first uh, six to eight inches or so, and on the side, we are going to show uh, the clay uh, the clay down in there with boulders sticking out and so on and so forth. So this entire diorama, instead of painting the side, it's all going to be uh, dirt, and we will put an appropriate uh, edge banding here on the, the diorama. Uh, this is what it's going to look like uh, with the vehicle on it. And uh, let's zoom out. Okay. And as you can see, a lot of the trenches are covered. Um, that one there, it's in the center. But we want him crawling over the machine gun is nest. And uh, it'll work for us. Okay. And... Uh, there we have it, okay, from a different point of view and so on and so forth. And uh, when we look at, uh, yeah, we saw the awesome shot there in the other video <laughs> when that thing is coming over. And uh, the machine gunner is going to be uh, right here. Okay, so the object, okay, of that tank is to run over the machine gunner to protect the infantry. That is the story of this diorama, and hopefully you'll be able to depict it uh, as uh, we see it as a static model. Thanks for watching, folks. That is where I'm at. Without further ado, Switcher, signing off.